Hello friends and welcome back to the Monday Word of the Week Tarot and Energy Reading. In today's video we're going to be working with some tarot cards as well as some oracle cards so that we can pick the Word of the Week which essentially becomes sort of like an intention or a direction that we can take with our week. So if that sounds good when I'm just dead right in. Hey guys what's going on it's Meshi with Meshi TV. So we are back with another Another word of the week video and the intention behind this video really is very simple we're going to be using some of the Oracle decks as well as a tarot deck so that we have a direction or we have sort of an idea of what we can place our focus on so that's how we pick the word that we can or a phrase that we can kind of focus on for the week that way you become you become a little bit more mindful about as you go on with your day-to-day -day. now given that we're out of mercury retrograde i think this is sort of like the perfect time to just dive right into it i also wanted to share with you so here's what we're going to be using i am going to be using the brand new the wild unknown tarot deck now finally this is the tarot deck I, I waited way too long to get this so I'm going to be using this guy from Kim Kron's I'm debating between the universe has your back oracle as well as the moonology you guys know that I'm there's a there's a deep love affair with this guy and then and then I waited and I waited and I waited and then finally I just I couldn't wait any long and, I, and then I ended up buying the roomy hopefully you can see it from the glare um, I bought the roomy oracle deck this is from Elena Fairchild now the only thing that I'm not a huge fan of is like look at the size of the cards versus look at the size of the box but I mean you know the there there is like a little booklet that it comes with so that's probably why also, quick side note, this has nothing to do with anything, but I thought I would just show you guys. I am finally back at making new candles and I'm using natural cotton wicks, um, wicks essentially. I still have wooden wicks, but as of tomorrow, I'm going to have brand new scents available for the summer. So if you wanted to pick something up, please let me know. You can message me directly. I will also leave an email that you, the business email where you can also place your orders and we should basically everywhere so now that the public announcements have been done why don't we just dive right in let's just start playing and this is in no particular order whatsoever so you will find that I'm going to pull all the cards and then after that we're sort of look at what the messages are The Six of Pentacles, the Son of Cups, and the Daughter of Swords. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> You're going to love this. I mean, I was already thinking this in my head, but I think you're really going to like this. We're just using the Moonology Oracle. Basically, I'm using every single deck that I showed you because I just couldn't choose. And honestly, they're both, they're both great. <laughs> oh my goodness. I haven't actually looked at, I know that Mercury retrograde is now officially out of retrograde, which will make it a little bit easier. It will make it a little bit easier for all of us, trust me. But there's definitely a theme. Right now I'm just shuffling the roomy deck. And I mean, if you haven't had a chance to take a look at this, these are massive by the way, like size wise, they're pretty big. Okay, before I even look any of them up, here's here's what here's what came up and then here's sort of what my take is. So we have the six of pentacles. 
hopefully you can see it. So as you can tell, it's sort of like a branch that has all of these different fruits that are sort of growing on it. And while we are always reminded that it's kind of interesting, like I have a different take on pentacles, but most people talk about money when it comes to pentacles. I actually like to talk about sort of bringing certain elements that you have been working on to fruition. And these are sort of like, I kind of look at this as sort of like the fruits of your labor. Like these are literally the fruits. And I feel like this is coming, something is coming to fruition. And then we have the sun of cups and cups are always about emotions. But when we're looking at, hopefully you can tell, probably not because it's way too much glare. Here we go found the way. So this is your son of cups. So something is coming out. Something is shining through. Doves are definitely, I don't know. I got nothing on doves. Doves are very peaceful. Like, and, and if you look at even just like the color scheme, um, lots and lots of color happening here in the cup, which means that lots of emotion. It could also mean, I could also kind of interpret this as all of those different energies are sort of coming into balance, but they're all shining through. And then doves to me always sort of represent like very peaceful, very graceful, very gracious, you know? Like it's almost like something is coming to fruition that you have been working on and you're sort of moving through that. And then we have the daughter of swords. Now, and then we have the owl and owls are generally very wise. They, they definitely, especially a white owl definitely represents wisdom. Again, let's get you zoomed in. But then look at all of those different, um, look in the background, different little light bulbs. Actually, let me go in with this hand. Here we go. So when you're looking at the image, you can see all of those different, um, it's almost like little fireflies, but again, you have like red, orange. So it, again, these two, they're strongly related. Again, it, to me, it goes back to energy and it goes back into the, the chakras. And, but she's sort of sitting on the sword, which means that she knows she's cutting through that. She's cutting through the things and it's kind of like lighting up the night. Now, we'll, let's just talk about the tarot first, because I'm, I'm super, and I mean Kim Kranz. If you, if you don't have her book, you absolutely should get it because her explanation for all of these cards are just, they're crazy awesome. I think partially that's why I bought it, because I knew that like her explanations would be great. So let's talk about Seven of Pentacles first, and I wanted to just read that for you. I mean, six of pentacles and seven, six of pentacles. So the six of pentacles, basically the, the keywords here are prosperity, growth, and generosity. The six of pentacles indicates that your long awaited fruits are ready for harvesting, bringing more wealth than anticipated. So make sure that you're generous during this bountiful time. This card can also signify generosity coming from someone else. If this is the case, accept the help with grace and put the resources to good use. So yeah, I definitely see fruits of labor coming to fruition. Let's see what we have for the Son of Cups, which I think it would be like the Ace of Cups. Artistic and introspective. Like all of the Cups family, the Son truly excels within the arts. He's usually a musician or a visual artist of some kind, and he finds success within his field. His natural tendency to look inward adds to his charm and mystique. To others, he may seem secretive and even peaceful, while deep inside he carries a dark kernel of intensity. I kind of look at this card as being very, very okay with just like hanging out within your own little, within your own little cocoon, with, within your own little jam while you're basically, you might be, and it's, oh my goodness. And it's so interesting. Cause like earlier when I did um, a reading, it was very much about 
Like if you haven't seen it on Instagram, I will just leave the link below so you can take a look because I'm doing a 30 day tarot challenge and it was exactly about that. One of the Oracle cards that I pulled was to actually go, go within, um, become a little bit more introspective. And then the daughter of swords is honest and insightful. The daughter of swords is a young woman whose honesty and insight take her far in life. People truly value her frankness. She learns from keen observation, almost seems as though she never stopped stops watching. Sometimes this becomes a burden because she can't help noticing this or that small detail that could have been done better. There's a potential for her to hold on to those ex experiences and become spiteful and judgmental. So things can go either way here. Um, I kind of look at it like the daughter of swords. It, she becomes very insightful. So here's what I get from at least from the tarot, is that your work is coming to fruition. Take some time to become a little bit more introspective and go within and kind of examine. It's almost like use this time during, um, now that Mercury retrograde is finished, use this time to go within and really ask yourself those questions of what is it that I'm passionate about still? What is it that really lights me up? Because really like you have the cup, like the light is definitely happening that something that something insightful can get ignited and observe your environment around you so that, you know, you don't have to notice everything to be judgmental about it. Don't use that as a way of being judgmental or judgy. Use it as a way of learn and observe so that you you can examine your environment so you can do better. I always like um, true wisdom really comes from that space where you use that information in a non-judgmental way, but then you you kind of, you, it gives you the opportunity to do better. Now let's look at the Oracle cards. And I mean, it's, you can't even make this up. I will just just post a picture here of what I actually pulled for the tarot um, challenge for today, but it's very similar. So Gabby reminds us that I choose love. Here we go. I choose love no matter what. So we're very much invited right now at this time to go within and to connect back to the heart. And then we have new moon in Aquarius. Again, we're talking about the heart once again. So this one says, bring love into the situation. How can you bring love? How can you bring, how can you use all of those things that really light you up so that you bring, you do that from the heart? Because if you can do that, then, you know, then you're going to be able to have an easier time manifesting the things that you want and allow all of those projects or all of those things that you've been working on to come to fruition. And what is Rumi reminding us? It's the card that I pulled is beyond the threshold of fear. Now, without me even reading the actual poem, just look how stunning, but like, look, look how he's looking towards the light, how there is a dawn. When we're looking at what is beyond the threshold of fear. So a lot of the times it's so interesting because when we're connecting, <laughs> you absolutely have the polarity this week. You absolutely, absolutely have the polarity this week because there's only two true emotions. There's, there's only energetically speaking, you're either swinging towards love or you're swinging towards fear. And isn't that interesting when you're being reminded what happens when you look beyond the fear, beyond your ego, beyond what you're being reminded that you should be doing? What happens then? You know, that's when you find your potential. You find, you find that edge at that dance of comfort zone and then you can push through that. Then you have massive breakthroughs. And I mean, use the wisdom of the owl. Use the passion that lies with with what the sun shows you here. But let's read the actual, let's read the actual poem because the poems that come with this deck is, I would just buy it just for the book itself, even if you didn't even get the cards. Enter the lion's jungle. Don't think about getting hurt. Fearful thoughts are phantoms of the mind and no one is harmed in this jungle, and everything is compassion and love. It is your fear holding you back, like a bar behind the door. I'm not going to read the full description because literally like their description is like about two pages long. 
and there's also it's not funny and then at the very end there's also a sacred ritual that you can do but I just want you to contemplate ultimately the message here is find your polarity here are you going to choose love or are you going to choose fear fear is always going to be available boring mundane fear playing it small, living in lack, all of those things, they are always available to you. Molly's going to join us in this reading right now. She wanted to kind of tell you what true love looks like and she will likely pick up one of the cards and start chewing it, which we're not going to let her do that. So my message to you, I'm again, once again, if you have been following this series before, you already know I'm going to pop up a few keywords here that I think that's going to help you sort of formulate your word of the week, but it becomes very clear very quickly, you guys. Swing towards love, open up the heart, open up to the possibility that perhaps you're not here to struggle and to have a hard time while you're here. You have to look beyond and do your best to look beyond what, what meets the eye. Yes, I know you want to go, I know. Look beyond what just meets the eye because a lot of times your own ego kind of likes to send you some really fun messages that are not exactly based on reality and it's not really based on what's actually true. Oh, thank you, baby. So that's all I wanted to share with you guys. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you did, you can give me a thumbs up. You can, you can also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Every single Monday we chat here and we chat about energies and we chat about what is truly the reading of the week. What can be the word of the week? What can we focus on? What can we shift our focus on so that we live a more intention-based life? That's all I have for you today. I hope you have enjoyed it. And I just keep, and just remember, keep shining your light while your dog takes apart your house. And I will see you guys again in my next video.